Well, take a look at this. Ew. What? What? What is that? Oh, that that that, <laughs> that looks nasty. Wow. We blew a tire. We blew a tire on the side of the damn highway. Great. Oh, shit. This car is so comfortable that that flat tire felt like it was merely the wind blowing the car around a little bit. As I expected, she's not taking any air. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. It is a windy, wet day today. We are back with the Cadillac Fleetwood Brome. It's time to put some white walls on it. We're gonna go to discount tire and we're gonna to try to get those tires put on. A couple other things I wanna get done today, including getting back to that flush and see how the coolant or the water, I should say, it's just rusty water in the engine. We're gonna see what that looks like. Let's get to it. So here's the tires I went with. I got them from Tire Rack and they were about $515 total. These are 60,000 mile tires. They're uh, Hankook, Hankook, Cook, uh, Kenergy ST, two 25-75-15s. It should have had I think 235-70-15s, but 225-75s should be fine. These are the only size that I could find in white walls unless you wanted to go extreme and get the Vogues. And I'm sorry, I just couldn't spend $1,200 on Vogues. So we're going to go with these tires instead. I'm hoping we can fit all of these in the trunk. These things are pretty, these are massive tires, like no joke. Great. Let me put these in and then we'll get back to it. All right, here we go. I can't believe this, but these all fit. Like, not a problem at all. I love this car, man. <laughs> I really do. I cannot wait to see her with some white walls. I think it's going to change the whole look of the car. All right, so we might not even make it. We've got four and a half miles. Do you hear that? We have a flat tire. We blew a tire. We blew a tire on the side of the damn highway. Great. Awesome. I knew this was coming. This car is so comfortable that that flat tire felt like it was merely the wind blowing the car around a little bit. That tire's done. Uh, we're gonna try to put some air in it real quick, guys. Cross your fingers. But uh, I think I think we are S O L. Lovely. We're just a few miles away too. We we got so close. We still got so far to go. As I expected, she's not taking any air. That tire is blown. We do have a spare. I hope you don't have to take the fender skirts off to get to it. This is fun. Tighten these down. Try not to get hit. It's only five miles, right? It'll be fine. We've got a drama filled video for you today. I've had to slow it down to 50. That's the only spare tire we got. And the car's starting to kind of feel like it's wobbling again. And now I hear noise from the front left wheel. It's, it's making, you know that if you've ever blown a tire, the sound of tread coming off of your tire is what it sounds like to me. It's making that. We've got, got two miles, two miles to go 
before we're at our exit and even at 50 the car is kind of waving around i'll tell you something about a cadillac though my grandfather had a 66 and he blew a tire on our way to cat fest in oklahoma city we didn't even know we had a flat not even a clue that we had a flat tire at all somebody driving next to us pulled up to us and said hey man you got a flat we couldn't believe it flat tire couldn't tell that's what i love about a cadillac we had a flat and if it wasn't for the way the car was starting to kind of sway i couldn't tell for sure it's a windy day i couldn't tell a hundred percent if it was wind or if we had a flat but I was, I was like nah man that's a flat and sure enough it was i'm starting to feel a little little sketched out right now so we're going to stop filming and we're going to try to get the rest of the way to discount tires so y'all do me a favor cross your fingers and say a little prayer for us hope we get there all right ladies and gentlemen it's an entirely different day yesterday was crazy here in oklahoma we had some unbelievable winds causing some damage i had to come out here to the ar headquarters and clean some things up a little bit but i think we got it all taken care of now so we can show you what the old boat looks like on some fresh white walls i'm very happy with the way it came out we're not done with it yet we've got a lot more to do in this very video i've decided we're going to go ahead and change the oil in the oil filter we are going to reflush the cooling system in fact i've got some fresh uh blue devil this time and i've got a new thermostat because i am now 100 percent certain that the thermostat is intermittently closing and opening it's not working properly that much i can guarantee you so we got a few things to do today before I can get too far into it though I got to move that Mustang out of the way I have put since the last flush what 250 about 250 miles on the old girl all right let's roll this window up and let me show you how good she looks with her new set of white walls um, in an upcoming video i'm going to take this to brian at the auto spa at your request so many of you have asked me please take it to the auto spa so i'm going to he's going to bring this paint back not only is he going to bring the paint back he is going to take care or is going to attempt he said this vinyl top needs to be repainted he said unfortunately that uh all that dark stuff he said it's it's just too much so he said he thinks he can bring this top out by painting it so i think with a fresh detail in and out leather treatments uh paint correction coating new tires painted roof cooling system functioning properly heating system uh working properly i i think th that's about as far as we're going to go with this car but tell me how beautiful those hand cook uh kenergy sts came out i don't know about you but for me it's just not a cadillac without the white walls man and discount tire put the tires on because the old ones were black side out i mean they weren't white walls at all they just assumed i didn't want white walls out so they put them on backwards and i had to have them do it again they were not happy now i did learn something just the other day about these side skirts so when i had the flat i could not get these skirts off well it turns out somewhere up here there's a a pin there's no tools needed i read about it online i can't see it maybe you can there's supposed to be something up here that you can grab onto and you pull it ah hold on right there <laughs> there it is and there and there's the other one right there you see you pull these down just like that now i know and then you give it a good tug and off she comes. I had a lot of people telling me, these don't come off. That's part of the car, it does not come off. It absolutely does come off. It sure does. Uh, and there you go, look how much more room you've got to get your tire out than with this on. That's a lot more room, guys. And then to put it on, I don't know if I can do this one-handed, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Uh, no, guys, I need both hands for this. There you go, back together couple clips down here once you get on you just kind of pop it like that i've already done it yeah give a little pop like that and it pops it right back into place there she goes so if you're 
<laughs> ever in a situation like me and you're stuck well there you go now you know how to make it easier on yourself of course we got the Alante sitting over here looking pretty uh, I'm about to do some work on this one I got a lot to do to this one so we're about to get back to that one and then the Aston Martin is sitting here I can't decide which car I want to drive today I drove the Cadillac down here and now I've got to choose between the Aston Martin or a car that I haven't driven in a long long time the SEMA Mustang uh, really really considering taking this one out today I absolutely love this car but anyway enough of that we need to get on with the flushing of the cooling system on this one obviously it's going to be pretty gnarly whatever comes out of it is she still got pressure she does but she's not really hot let's go ahead and crack this uh, just a hair easy girl there we go pressure is off I don't recommend doing this by the way oh wow yeah that is nasty now remember we flushed the crap out of this last time there is no coolant in this system anything left in here is just going to be rusty water but before we can flush it out with cold water we're going to have to let her cool down on her own guys so i'm going to give her a break we'll come back when she's cooled off i keep seeing these cars in here and i started wondering how much money did i spend on all this I think I'm going to do a video that's going to surprise you guys uh, where I go over how much I spent on each one of these cars. They may not look like much, but when you start walking down the aisle here and you see every one of these things sitting here, you start realizing, boy, there's some, there's some money tied up in these cars, guys. Uh, <laughs> there, oh, and there's a car missing back there. They finally came and got that old Roadster. She's gone. That car right there was twenty-five grand plus shipping. That car right there was twenty-two thousand. So that just gives you. That's just two cars, guys. That's just two cars. And uh, I think I've decided which one I'm going to drive. I really, I was going to drive the Aston Martin. I really was, but it's been so long since I've taken this car out for a proper drive. Uh, I decided I'm going to go ahead and take the Mustang. We had the battery out of her for about a week and I had it on like one of those regenerative cycles on my tornado on that top Don. Uh, the battery's back to life. Thankfully she fired up with no issue. But ever since I replaced the battery, it's got a little wonky idle. It kind of comes and goes and then it comes and goes. I think we really need to drive this car and hopefully the computer gets itself figured back out again. So why don't we go run down to Santa's workshop real quick. And let's see what he's working on and we'll come back here and focus on our cadillac all right hopefully the idol's getting a little better let's give her a little pull she's warmed up now red line <laughs> yeah get it red line get it Oh man, <laughs> I love bouncing her off the rev limiter, man. She's a fun car. I'm glad I took her. I'm glad I took her today. We can have a little bit of fun on these twisties, man. These roads get pretty, pretty gnarly. She's got the right suspension for it and the right tires. Weather is good today. 80 miles an hour going across these corners, not a problem. Woo! <laughs> oh man, let's slow it down a little bit, right? <laughs> 5,000 RPM. Oh, she's a great car. Anyway, enough horseplay. Let's get down to Santa's workshop. Let's see what he's working on. Well, we made it. Let's go see what he's working on. Oh, it's that Corvette. How's it going, guys? Well, that's never good. It's a good place for it. <laughs> Boy, she's looking good. Look at that. 
Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a Corvette you're supposed to. They're not supposed to be easy to work on. That's why I never wanted to own one. <laughs> I've owned four or five of these. This is one of my favorite generations, and I don't know why. It's one of the most hated generations, too. I hope you got a good picture of my butt. No, I tried real hard to avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been, man? Corvette, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. Boy, look at those exhaust tips. Ooh. Yeah. It, That's a good-looking car, man. And it's got a brand-new spare tire underneath it. Where'd you find a brand new tire for it? Walmart. Really? Yeah, hundred bucks. I don't know you. I didn't for the for the donut. No. No, it's a full size. It's full size. Oh, okay, okay. I thought it was. I was like, it's man. Not a Cooper Cobra, but. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. All right. Well, I'm not gonna screw up your video here. So let me oh, sh let me shut this camera off and. Well, as long as you don't hear it run on your video, that's fine. <laughs> uh, well, it ain't gonna run, so we're not worried about that. <laughs> Guys, this car, I, I, I have too much fun in it. I really do. And that's probably why I need to get rid of this thing. I love all my cars. I buy each and every one of them for a reason. I don't buy them because I hate them. I buy them because I really like the, the type of car it is. And this one is, I, I almost hate to say that it's too much fun. But, but this car is too much fun. When you hear that supercharger just, choo, choo, and you hear the exhaust behind you. I mean, you've got the noises from the front, the noises from the back, and this car just flies, man. When you're into boost, she just goes. It it makes you want to spend all your time just smashing on it, and, and I do that a lot. Anyway, it's going to rain soon. We've got storm clouds moving in. I just came out of the rain. There it is right there. It's almost here. I need to get the top up on the Aston. I need to get the Aston back in the garage. Hopefully we can bring a light out here and we can get to flushing the coolant on this caddy before the storm hits us. All right, we're finally getting back to it. Hopefully you can see under here. It's been a while since I've worked on a car outside. It's been since Indiana since I've done that. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I need to get this whole thing out of the way. I need to pull that thermostat. I got a feeling we're gonna find a bunch of goop or nastiness where the thermostat is. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. I'm gonna run it without the thermostat and I'm gonna put that new uh, bottle of super flush stuff that I've got into the cooling system. And we're gonna go take her on a drive, run her around, let that stuff get through the system and uh, and we'll get back to it, I guess. But I'm also gonna change the air filter. I've got a, uh, a brand new air filter right here for it. I don't know what condition the air filter is, uh, is in under here. We're gonna pop it off real quick. Two 13 mil bolts, one there, one there. And we could probably take this stupid resonator thing off. Flathead right there, take that off. We can pull that whole home plate thing off. Then uh, we'll take this filter assembly out and see what it looks like. Forgive me if the video quality is a little grainy. Ugh. Good Lord, wow. All right, now this. Ah, I see. We've got another screw under here. I thought you could take this all off as one assembly, but well, apparently not. You got to take the home plate off first. This is the stupidest design. I wish I had a just a good pair. Oh, there's a rat's nest. Oh, a rat's nest. Oh, wow. A big one. Yeah. The mice have been under here. Well, it's a good thing we're cleaning that up. Of course, that could be a serious fire hazard. So, let's go ahead and get this off. And see what that air filter looks like. I knew she'd been parked for a long time, guys. There was never any doubt about that. There we go. Okay. There's our thermostat. There's our rat's nest. And let's pull this off real quick and see if there's anything fun hiding under here. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of mouse poop. Lovely. We're gonna need to clean all of this up before we go any further. So here is the thermostat. Teeny tiny. That's gonna be, what, an eight? It's not a 10. Yeah, it's gonna be like an eight. Two 
bolts as usual. Um, there is our rat's nest. I'll get that cleaned up. Thankfully, they didn't chew the wires. That's a miracle right there. None of the wires under here got chewed, but something was living under there. And then I already knew when I saw that rat's nest that when we got in here, yeah, there's a lot of eaten seeds along with a lot of poop. There's tons, piles of poop in there. So we need to get that cleaned out as well. I'll have to bring my shop back out here and suck all this stuff up. But once I do that, we'll come back and we'll, in fact, why don't I start draining the coolant right now? All right, she's starting to go. That's, ooh, wow. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Like I said, don't sweat it. It's just rust. That's all rust. That is absolutely disgusting. As I figured it would be. Let's take off the upper radiator hose. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's... She's neglected. We already knew that though. I'm definitely curious to see what's going on under that thermostat housing. All right, are we ready? It's gonna be loud, guys. Now that we got all that taken care of, let's hope these don't break. <laughs> That's kind of scary, right? Oop, thunder and lightning. We're working on a deadline here, guys. Mother Nature is only going to let us do this for so long tonight. Let's take that out. We'll set that up there out of the way. Same with this one. And we're going to see what she looks like under here. So far, it looks better than I expected it to, so I'm not feeling too worried. You ready? Not bad. Thank you, thank you. That, I want me to get these little, get my little hook pliers in here and, uh, there we go. There's our thermostat. My question is, is she closed all the way? And I'm gonna say, Yes, she is. It's the proper 180 thermostat. It does look like it's closed all the way. So, that's good. Alright, so here's what I had to do. I had to manufacture this thermostat gasket thingy lebob here. This is the old thermostat. You can see I just cut it into pieces, cut it apart, so now it's wide open. The reason I did that is because you've got to have this o-ring and you can't just throw that rubber o-ring in there it won't it won't seal got to have this metal so since we got a new thermostat anyway now we can throw this back into the engine where she's designed to go and we can put the thermostat housing over it and it will seal properly so we can run this car with the thermostat wide open and get the coolant or the flush i should say really flowing all right guys the thunder is here, the lightning is here, it's getting wild. We're gonna see what comes out of this thing now. She's free flowing. Oh, I sure hear it. It's coming out of this hose right here. Oh, you know what, it's not nearly as bad as it was, guys. Not nearly as bad. Here's what we're doing, we'll hook, hook this up right here. It should start coming out of the bottom. Maybe we even get a little bit out of the top, I don't know. Let's see what's coming out of there. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, she's puking some nasty. Gross. Yeah. Just to make sure, I'll put these hoses back on here just for a minute. I'm going to run some through there too, but I don't want to get, if I can help it, I don't want to get the OptiSpark wet. I don't know if you guys have ever done that before, but it could be a bad. Ooh. Ooh, that lightning, boy, it's here. <laughs> oh yeah, there she is. Let me take you guys away from the light here. Yeah, it's gonna be here any minute. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get finished. All these cars out here, I'm liable to get struck by lightning. 
Ooh, my damn cell. Thunder rolls and the lightning strikes. Yeah, I'm just screwing around, man. Here it is. Okay, <laughs> let's try to knock this one out, guys. You've seen how nasty it is. All I gotta do is flush this out. We can button her back up. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I don't know if this rain is holding off just for us, but I appreciate it. Here's what we got. We're gonna throw this in there. I right, took the liberty of cracking the the foil just to make it easier for us for video purposes. Let's dump this in here. I wonder what it looks like. Oh, it looks like water. I promise you, I just took the seal off. It is not water. Everything is buttoned up. Hose clamps are back on. We're going to start filling up the cooling system slowly with straight water, again, along with this stuff. And then I'll burp it. I need to get this air filter back in here. Now that we've got that all cleaned up and looking nice. There we go. I want to change the oil and everything as well. I got an AC Delco oil filter to throw in this bad boy too. There we go. Get in the hole. There we go. Just like that. Let's button this thing up. Then we can fire it up and hope that we didn't get the OptiSpark wet and destroy something important. So here's what I've done. I went ahead and turned the water on low because if you turn it on high, it foams up and makes a big mess. I learned this the last time. We also took the bleeder screw out. I don't know how easy it is to see, but right there in the center of your screen, this tiny little screw right here is supposed to go in there. That's the bleeder screw. I went ahead and just took it out to give her room. There's no thermostat. So once she starts filling up, she should just start shooting water out. Once we get water and no air bubbles, we should be good to go to button her up. Put all this intake stuff back on, and with it, there it goes, right there, just like I was saying. You gotta wait till it stops. See, she's looking pretty good now. Let's go ahead and screw that in just a hair, and she'll kind of pee right out the back there. You can kind of see it trickling. All right, that's what we're looking for. We wanna make sure the cooling system is full without any air. Well, guys, it's time to fire it up. I've got everything buttoned back up. The rain is really starting to come down. She's still full, but I'm hoping that when we fire it up, maybe she'll suck down just a little bit. Everything should be good to go. I gotta hurry, because it's getting kinda, getting kinda gnarly out here. I just put new wiper blades on her too. There we go. Look at those blades, there we go. Nice new wiper blades, because I knew. All right. Everything is good. We're going to turn... Oh, the air conditioning just came on. Econ. There we go. We don't want the AC. Let's turn the heat up. Leave it on economy. We'll turn it down a little bit low. Ooh, lightning. No warning lights on the dash. She seems to be quite happy. We'll just leave this running for a little while and hope that nothing, nothing goes wrong. It shouldn't. There we go. Let's check this coolant level. She hasn't moved much. She's still full. Yeah, right there. So I'm gonna say that's safe. We'll tighten that down. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and we will reconvene shortly, see how she's doing. All right. The directions on that stuff says uh, you can drive your car for an hour or two, or you can just let it run for 20 minutes. I let it run for 30 or 40 sitting here. Then I took it out and I drove it for about an hour. And now I let it sit here again. And it's been sitting, ooh, it's nice and warm in here. <laughs> very, very nice. Engine temperature is at 195 degrees without a thermostat. I know it sounds high, but that's normal for these things. If we turn it on up here, I guarantee you that is, oh yeah, nice and hot. We've got good heat. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take her for just a quick ride because I want to cool, I wanna cool this down from 190. I'd like to see it down at about 150, 140. I'm gonna put it back on that mode real quick so we can see mode eight. It's at 197. So why don't we take her for just a real quick spin 
We'll get the engine cooled off nicely. And then we can come back, open the hood, let it cool down a little bit more. And then we can finish flushing this stuff out. It says not to leave this coolant in for more than, uh, that flush in for more than four hours. All right, here we go. We're already down to 196, 195, 194, see what I mean? Without a thermostat, she cools off quick, guys. She cools off real quick. So let me continue on my way. We'll get her down to about 150, and we'll shut her off. All right, that concludes our little joy ride. We'll get her back in the driveway. And we've got her down to 155, which for me is good enough. Turn all this stuff off. Let's shut her down. Pop the hood. And as soon as the engine has cooled off, we'll be back. Well, take a look at this. Ew. What? What, what is that? Oh, that, 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 <laughs> that looks nasty. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. That's gross, guys. Yeah, we're going to flush this thing out and make it look a little bit better. All right. Let's see how she looks. Hope. Ah, nice, nice, nice. I have left it sitting here for about another 20 or 30 minutes. I just want to make sure we flushed as much of that crap out of here as possible. And I was hoping that the water would be perfectly clear. Take a look at that. It doesn't get much better than that, guys. I mean, that is nice. Let's take this top hose off. Hopefully it's the same. Nice and clean. There we go. We'll put that on down here and that'll reverse the flow. Now it should come out of the top here. Any minute, come on. And with any luck, whatever, there it is. Nice and clean water. That's what I was looking for. Okay, we're good. I can promise you, all of the cleaning solution is now out of the system. And the reason it's imperative I do this tonight, guys, it's after 10 o'clock and I, it takes me over an hour to get home. It's got to be done tonight because the temperature is going to drop below freezing tonight. And I have to make sure this thing is good. I love this car. Whether I sell it or not, I still haven't made a decision on it. But regardless, I love this car. And whether it's me or the next guy or the next gal that owns it, I want to make sure everything is good for them. So I want to make sure we put some fresh coolant in it. And I finally made a decision about what kind of coolant we're going to go back with. And the winner is right here. I know it is not the original Dex Cool. I've had so many mixed opinions about this in the comment section. But honestly, I'm just going to go with the extended life ready to use stuff. There is no Dex Cool left in this system. I think this is probably the better stuff to use. So let's pop this thermostat housing off. Let's get a new thermostat in it. And we can button her up. All right, guys. How's she look? Not too shabby. This thing cleaned up really nicely. I got a brand new 180 degree thermostat to go in place of, well, this one. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in. And it's got this little, this little air pocket release valve right here. Just that little copper thing. We're going to put this at the top because this is actually angled up like this. And of course, air is going to want to escape from the highest part. So we're going to put that right there to help air escape. We're going to put this back on, button up the hoses, fill it up with coolant, and we'll start her up. And with any luck, we're going to have good heat and the temperature is going to be right around 190, 95 degrees. That's about what's normal before the cooling fans kick in. I think this thing is almost done. She's starting to warm up. I haven't put the cap on yet. I wanted to show you how clean that is in there. Look at that. Look how nice that is. That's the cleanest this thing has been in a long, long time. And I think we got to it just in time. I really do. I think if this thing had been left for another couple years like that, it probably would have done irreparable damage to the cooling system. So we're getting up to temp pretty quick. She's sitting at 120, uh, 120 degrees. She's moving right on up. All right, we're going to take her for a ride. That thermostat should be opening like any minute now, sitting at 174 degrees. 
we're gonna back up once the thermostat opens it should go from 170 uh, 178 180 maybe 182 see 175 and you should see it drop now how much will it drop I don't know it could be 10 degrees it could be 15 20 degrees the point is is we should see it drop so just to help her warm up a little bit faster we're gonna go ahead and get on the road take it for a very short drive make sure that temperature gets where we need it to get which is right around 180 then we should see it drop and as long as it does that everything should be working properly at that point we can test the heat and hopefully fingers crossed we have fixed our heating issue ah see that it got to 170 what 176 now it's dropping rather quickly 173 so it looks like the thermostat already opened it is a 180 yeah the thermostat is definitely open it's a 180 but that doesn't mean it opens at exactly 180 degrees if it gets to 176 or so that's perfectly fine the point is we see the temperature dropping once it drops it will start heating up again as all of the coolant in the engine reaches the same temperature i know it's dark for you guys we're cruising and she seems to be holding while we're moving at around 177 degrees which is perfectly fine with me let's get back to the house then i'm gonna let it idle we'll see it should get up to i don't know 199 195 something like that we'll see how high it gets make sure the cooling fans come on and it cools back down then we'll test our heat then we'll change our oil she's heating up nicely we're at 195 degrees now i've got my infrared thermometer here and we're going to go check that upper radiator hose it should be somewhere right around there i would expect somewhere within five degrees so somewhere between 195 and 200 is what i would expect from it let's take a quick peek at the hose by the thermostat 197. she is right on the money good deal that's exactly what i wanted to see any minute now the cooling fans should kick on and she should start cooling herself back down again 196 i think it's time to get out stand in front of the car and the cooling fans not on yet they'll be kicking on any minute here we've only got another couple degrees there they go right there there it is <laughs> perfect perfect look at that fan just a spinning that's what I want to see she'll cool down pretty quickly in fact I guarantee you the temperature is already dropping yeah down to 195 <laughs> That's what it's supposed to do. So it does appear that our cooling system is functioning properly. So why don't we uh, why don't we give the heater a quick test? Because that's the big that's the big thing for me. We were having a lot of problems out of the heater with this car, man. It just that cooling system was so bad, and getting the heat to come out for any length of time was almost impossible. She's down to 189. Let's put it on defrost. I don't think that's doing it justice, guys. There we go. One, uh, 109, 110, 111, 112, 15. It's hard to aim this thing, guys. I can't even tell really where, where I need to be. Let's try it on the. Let's try it on the floor. Maybe it's easier on the floor here. Oh hell, I don't. I don't even. I don't even know where I'm aiming. Point being, we do have heat. Yeah, I, I can't tell where the... Where's the... Oh, hell, I don't know. Wait, 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 right here. There's something right here. I can't see where I'm aiming, guys. I'm obviously not getting it in the in the right place here 115 116 117 19 that's close enough 
the weird thing about this car is when you turn the heat on, you can't get the heat to blow out of the vent. It's either going to come out of the top or it's going to come out of the bottom. And uh, good news. Oh, wow. Yes. That is good heat. I wish I could get this down here to 120, 130. There we go. 128. 130 degree temperatures. And I'm not having to rev it up or anything. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Bear with me. I know that uh, me crawling around trying to figure out where to get this thermometer was kind of a pain, but well worth it. Well worth it because we had a problem with fading heat. It would come and then it would just kind of fade away. Come and fade away. Not now. She's sitting here idling. We got good pressure. Ooh, ow, nice. We got good pressure on the cooling system. Everything is nice and hot. There's no leaks. I say it's time to change the oil and let's call it a wrap. Well, we haven't been under here in a little while, so I figure it's time to take a quick peek. And, uh, ow, I just hit my head. Anyway, uh, when we first got under here, if you guys remember right, there was a drip coming out of this uh, inspection cover here. Well, no drip. It's not leaking. So apparently it was leaking just a tad bit of oil when we first got it, but I guess after driving it several hundred miles, it settled down. It's not leaking anymore. There's those, uh, those nasty little, whatever those are, mud daubers. Here's the filter. It's a Napa Gold. We're going to get it off. I've already loosened it. That's going to be a, I don't know, a 14 or a 15. We'll get that off. We'll see what comes out of it. And we're going back with some of this pens oil not sponsored of course 5w30 made from natural gas it's full synthetic platinum and of course an ac delco filter this is a pf 52 e oem for the win let's get this thing opened up and let's see what that oil looks like Ooh, that is hot as hell wow well, oh crap yeah I mean, I did just drive the thing. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. Yeah, so now that's going to be covered in oil? Of course. Sure, why not? Yeah, this filter is hot as heck, man. Uh, so I was trying to <laughs> use that, and uh, as you can see, it didn't, didn't pan out very well for me. Let's try to get this off without burning ourselves, can we? Yep. Ow. Ah, shit. Jeez. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to that. Ah, she. All right. That's uh that's hot. I'm gonna move. Ah, crap. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna leave everything alone. Let's get this drain plug off. Let's see what comes out of her. All right, you guys ready to see what's coming out of this? Here she goes. Ooh, that is super damn hot. Please don't burn me. Ooh. It's gonna hurt. Oh shit! Damn it! Ah! <laughs> Woo! I wasn't quick enough. There we go. <laughs> it's definitely dirty for sure. It doesn't look bad though. She's due for an oil change for sure though. All right. Well. Let's let her finish draining. I'll put her all back together and we can fill her up with some fresh pens oil. All right, we got the new filter. Oh, great. I just made a mess. <laughs> we got the new filter. Let's go ahead and get it on there. I'll get a paper towel and we can uh, we can wipe her down. I'm gonna move this out of the way just a hair. Let's get this on. And then I don't, I don't torque these things down super tight, guys. I'm not one of those that's like, Hulk Hogan, the thing. Uh, I got oil all over my hands. Let me clean that up. I'll tighten that down. We can fill her up with some fresh oil. Well, she's back on the ground. I say it is time we put this in here. This time I'm using a funnel, guys, all right? So I shouldn't make a mess. There we go. Fresh oil. She's going to be happy to have some of that. I guarantee you it's been... Well, the oil change sticker on this is from 2015 so it's been almost 10 years according to that sticker since she has had fresh oil so this ought to do her up real nice all right we're pretty much done one last step let's fire it up make sure we don't have any problems any leaks 
which we shouldn't because we didn't before. Oil pressure light is on and it's immediately off. It helps when you fill the, uh, or pre-fill the filter, which I did. There she is. We could take this, should we take this oil change sticker? I think I'm gonna leave it, guys. I think I'm gonna leave it. April of 2015, <laughs> oil change due at 84,480. It's got 81,846. And I put 500 of those miles on there myself. I'm gonna try that heater just one more time. Oh, I heard the AC compressor came. Oh yes, wow. That is too hot, guys. That's insane. Really, that heat is absolutely amazing. Okay, well, I think that about does it. I'm getting really close to being finished with this car. The only thing that I, that I can think of that I have left is to take it to the auto spa, which we will do a before and after for you guys so you can see what it looks like when he's done. Hopefully the top gets repainted, the paint gets corrected with a coating. Should look really, really, really nice. Interior will get cleaned up. That'll look really nice as well. The white walls already make it look good. I've got a trunk popper, the little mechanism that failed back there on the trunk. I'm going to get that. It should be in any day. I already ordered it, brand new. So that should come in. We can use the button, you know, on the clicker and just beep, remote pop. After that, there's really nothing more that I can think of that I want or need to do to it. Might be worth the time and a few dollars to change the serpentine belt. But aside from that, she's done. Uh, she is really close to being done. And that leaves me with a decision of what to do with it. Now, as you guys know, I have way too many cars. I really do. And I love them all for different reasons, but I love the little Aston Martin here. This thing is an absolute beast and a blast to drive not to mention it gets looks absolutely everywhere i go but if we're being realistic you know seriously this is not a car for me okay it's just too damn expensive to keep this car should something go wrong it's it's going to cost a small fortune to fix anything that goes wrong with this car. Even if you do it yourself, parts are just too expensive. So I've decided this one is gonna go down the road. This one, however, I cannot make up my mind. And the issue that I'm having is it was it was so cheap, like $4,500 is what I paid for it. I've got some into shipping and there was probably a $300 buyer, so whatever. So let's say I've got 4,800, maybe I, hell, maybe I've got five grand into it, but then I put $500 in tires. Right, then I spent, I don't know what, another 150 on the trunk pull down mechanism. And then I spent 88 to get the tires installed. And then I probably spent another 150 on windshield wipers, coolant, thermostat. You see where I'm going? Uh, I've got a little bit of money into this car. And honestly, if I sold it for 55, I'm probably breaking even or coming close. So at that point, is it something that I hold on to because I love it? I really love the car. I've been driving it everywhere. I enjoy the car thoroughly. I find myself driving that car more than I drive anything else. And I think the main thing that I like about it is it was cheap. It's really cheap. It's easy to maintain. You can work on it yourself. Parts, you can get parts all day, every day, new or used for this thing. You can find just about anything you need for it anywhere. And then you can fix it yourself. So it's cheap to own and operate, cheap to maintain, and it was cheap to buy. So with all of this cheap going around, it makes it super difficult for me to want to get rid of it. So I need your help. Drop a comment below and tell me what you think I should do. Do you think I should get rid of it? You know, get my $5,500 back hopefully and, and move on to some new content? Or is this one that we should keep around? I'm gonna tell you right now, the Seville is gonna go down the road. The Elante, I'll probably hold on to the Elante. I would like to hold on to this, but the Seville, the little one the, the, with the really cool interior, that one is going down the road. That this one is so hard for me to let go of because it is such a great car. With that, ladies and gentlemen, drop those comments below. It is after midnight and I still have an hour drive home and I haven't decided exactly what I'm driving home yet. It's either going to be the Fleetwood or it's going to be the SEMA Mustang. You guys drop a comment below. Tell me which one I should drive. I, I honestly don't know, but I'm driving one of them home tonight. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. Comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.